These are TLEs, Transient Luminous Events. Elves, Halos, Sprites, Jets, all coming from thunderstorms all between about 50 and 90 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So the Isuel instrument on the Formosat 2 satellite, which is still up there circling the Earth now, uh, gathering information on the TLEs, and they've actually made available, not just the abstracts, they've made available the, all of the papers that have been published from their research. Fantastic. You guys are great for doing that. And here we have a picture of all four events. So on top is an elf, the second one is a sprite, the third one is a halo, and the fourth one is a gigantic jet. So my observations are that the same processes express themselves differently based on what they're interacting with and how much energy is available. So what we see on Earth, we should see everywhere. And we do. But sometimes it's hard to recognize because it's interacting with different material or it just has a different energy level. The sun obviously has a much higher inflow of energy and electron density available to it. Yet the underlying processes should be the same as here on Earth. Uh, upon a certain threshold, which the sun has obviously crossed, the reactions then become self-sustaining and quasi-stable. Now on Earth, the TLEs are powered from below by lightning flashes. So a lightning discharge occurs here at the surface, and within milliseconds, shortly, very shortly after, a TLE occurs above it. Now the stronger the discharge, the stronger the TLE. It's correlated. Now the same should hold true for the sun, and I think this is exactly how the sun works. Now, sprites straddle a double layer, reaching both down and up. Below them is the weather, the storm, the lightning flash, the surface phenomenon perpetually out of view on our sun. A continuous layer of sprites are what power the solar surface, powered from below by the lightning flashes, the discharges. Above the sprite layer is the elves layer that we know as the photosphere or the lower chromosphere. It's semi-transparent in that we can observe the top of the sprites through the elves, but we cannot see below that other than when sunspots punch through. So sunspots are areas that have no active sprites. There are no active storms, no discharges below, so no sprites or elves above. So when we're looking in sunspots, we're seeing down into the cloud level of the sun. The sprite layer wants to be continuous. It's a self-sustaining system. It wants it wants a neighbor. Yet, areas of no lightning, so small areas of calm, are constantly occurring on the sun. The lack of lightning, and hence lack of sprites, allows for fields to connect through from above and below that would otherwise be blocked by the sprite layer. And this becomes self-sustaining itself. Yet, the sunspots, <coughs> excuse me, the sunspots are inherently unstable because the sprite layer, again, wants to fill in. So like field lines are attracted to the material below the elf hole, which is another word that I'm using for sunspot, and it grows. The penumbral regions are being physically depressed by the incoming field lines, which in turn short out the storms below. No lightning, no sprites. The sunspot grows. Now sunspots on our sun are found in two parallel bands because this is where the field lines are strongest and they're able to sustain the calm activity below, short out and suppress the lightning. Areas of calm appear all over the sun at all times, but are almost always filled in by the sprite layer. Only under these bands, where the fields are strong enough, and when the fields are strong enough, can uh, sunspots become self-sustaining, for a while anyway, before the lightning resumes and the sprite layer is once again continuous.